so we'll be revising uh, characteristics and classification of living organisms this is chapter 1 yeah so this is the syllabus for exams in 2023 2024 and 2025 uh so we have characteristics of living organisms after that we have concept and uses of classification systems and next we have features of organisms let's start with characteristics uh we basically have seven characteristics and they are movement respiration sensitivity growth uh, reproduction excretion and nutrition uh and we have this mnemonic right here mrs gren to remember the characteristics and they are uh, movement respiration sensitivity growth reproduction excretion and nutrition so yeah mrs gren and uh, let's go through all of the characteristics now number one is movement it's an action by an organism or part of an organism causing a change of position or place and uh, yeah basically when you move from one place to another you change your position etc that's about it and then next you have respiration uh respiration uh, the chemical reactions that break down nutrient molecules in living cells to release energy for metabolism so basically uh the energy released right it's used for uh, chemical reactions in the cells it's used there so you use the energy and uh, next you have sensitivity it's the ability to detect or sense stimuli in the internal or external environment and make appropriate responses um may uh, an example we could take is a touch me not leaf so whenever you touch it it closes its leaves right yeah that's how it works that sensitivity it's its ability to detect and then uh, set, uh detect or sense the stimuli and then respond to it uh, and the next one we have growth it's a permanent increase in size and dry mass by an increase in cell number or cell size or both and I, i don't think this needs further explanation yeah uh next we have reproduction processes that make more of the same a uh, kind of organism uh next we have excretion it's the removal from organisms of toxic materials the waste products of metabolism uh which is the chemical reactions in the cells including respiration and also substances and excess of requirements also note uh ejection is not excretion uh there's this mistake which is made a lot where you know people take uh, people think that ejection is is excretion and they write in the exam you lose marks for that so passing out feces is not excretion uh yeah next we have nutrition it's the taking in of materials for energy growth and development plants require light carbon dioxide water and ions animals need organic compounds ions and also need water basically you take in the required nutrients for uh, for performing your tasks and etc yeah I hope that was clear. Do we have any questions? Then I'll I'll go ahead. Yeah. Now we have the biological classification system. Uh, classification means putting things into groups. Uh, classification systems aim to reflect evolutionary relationships, and biologists try to classify organisms. according to how closely they think they are related example all mammals are related because they all share a relatively recent common ancestor uh, same goes for any other uh, group example fishes yeah fishes are also related because they share a relatively recent common ancestor and a common ancestor is a species that is that has lived in the past and is thought to have given rise to several different species alive today and when we cla- classify organisms we look for features that they share with others which suggests that they are related to one another uh, in the past right uh, biologists used to um, go for morphology to classify but in the recent times uh, that's not been oh yes i i have the op- i have the session open for doubts and help Yeah, I I do have it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I was talking about morphology, right? So to classify organisms in the past, biologists uh, used to um uh use morphology to 
classify organisms in the past but right now that's uh, that's not really uh, used anymore dna based sequencing is much more used next we have species species is defined as a group of organisms that can reproduce to produce fertile offspring also species is the smallest group into which biologists classify organisms species can be classified into organism sorry into groups by the features that they share example all mammals have uh bodies covered in hair um they feed young from mammary glands and they have external ears the na and uh, yeah species next we have the binomial naming system uh binomial naming system is a system of naming species uh that is internationally agreed in which the scientific name is made up of two parts the genus and the species first you have the genus and then you have the species uh the first name in the binomial is the name of the genus that the organism belongs to a genus is a group of species that are related to one another so when you're writing uh, a name uh, in the binomial system right uh, let's say this is the genus and then you have species here write the genus should or the first letter of the genus should always be in uh, capital letter here and then uh, further you you have a space and then species should be in lower uh, lower case everything yeah the next one organisms were class first classified by a swedish naturalist called linnaeus in a way that allows the subdivision of living organisms into smaller and more specialized groups the species in these groups have uh, more and more features in common the more subdivided they get uh, he named organisms in latin you latin using the binomial system when the scientific uh, name of an organism is made of two parts starting with the genus always given a capital letter the first letter is always the capital uh, is always in capital and followed by the species starting with a lower case letter and also when timed binomial names are always in italics this indicates that they are latin and when you are um, uh, when it's handwritten uh, you don't have to write it in italics yeah just the homo sapiens yeah let's write this right um you have homo and then a space locus the genus uh sorry sapiens yeah and the sequence of classification is kingdom phylum class order family genus and species also is is everything clear because i don't see any doubts um uh, do we have any doubts any questions okay okay uh am i going to oh yeah uh, we have a question if we have an organism with a species name x and genus name y we have two other organisms such as species a and genus y and other organism um with the uh, species x and genus b which of these two are more closely related <clears throat> same sorry I didn't really quite get that question, but right now, since we're in the middle of the session, uh, I think it'll take time for me to actually answer. So I'll I'll uh, reply to you after the session, maybe. Yeah, we have another question. My teacher says instead of italics for species, we should underline is that needed or not? I don't think that's needed because uh, uh, because I think uh, wait, let me show you the syllabus. One minute. Yeah, here's the syllabus. Describe the binomial system of naming species. Um, I don't think underlining is required. Underlining isn't very required. You just uh, when you type it, you need to put it in italics.
Ah, uh, yes, we use binomial system when we talk about species name. Yeah. So should should we continue or do we have any more questions? And yes, you are not uh, required to underline an IGCSC. So should I continue explaining or uh, uh, do we have any more questions? Okay, I'll go ahead. Yeah, the sequence of classification is kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. Here I have an example for this red fox, vulpus vulpus. If you've done the past year questions, uh, vulpus vulpus comes uh, very often in, in the questions. Yeah, you don't have to memorize it though. Yeah. Now kingdom, we have animalia. This is the animal kingdom. Phylum, chordata. Class is Mammalia, order is Carnivora, family is Canidae, genus is Vulpus, and species Vulpus Vulpus. Yeah. And uh, I'll go to the next uh, slide. Dichotomous keys. Uh, dichotomous key is a way of identifying an organism by working through pairs of statements that lead you to its name. This comes very often in paper uh, two. If you're taking extended, yeah, paper two, this comes, no, not paper two, paper four, yeah, theory. This comes very often if you're taking extended, comes in code as well, but for paper four, uh, you'll definitely have a question from this. Yeah. And DNA based sequencing, as I was, uh, as I mentioned this uh, previously for classification, this is more used now instead of morphology. Yeah, the sequences of bases in DNA are used as a means of classification. Groups of organisms which share a more recent ancestor are, are more closely related, have base sequences in DNA that are more similar than those that share only a distant ancestor. Studies of DNA sequences of different species uh, show that uh, the more similar the base sequences in the DNA of two species, the more closely related those two species are. And the more recent in time their common ancestor is, this means that base sequences in a mammal's DNA uh, are more closely related to all other mammals than to any vert other vertebrate groups. Do we have any doubts for this topic or the previous one? I didn't see any response, so I'll go ahead with the next slide. Yeah. Now, kingdoms. Kingdoms are one of the major groups into which all organisms are classified. There are five uh, kingdoms into which organisms are classified. Into Sorry, there's a typo here. I typed not. I was in a hurry, so I accidentally typed not, but it's into. Let me just make it clear. Yeah, and we have five kingdoms. That is animal kingdom. Plant Kingdom, Fungus Kingdom, Protoctus Kingdom, and Prokaryote Kingdom. You need to be familiar with all five. Uh, basically, you just need to be, uh, you need to be uh, able to remember all the characteristic features of each particular kingdom. Now, let's go with the Animal Kingdom. The characteristic features of all animals is that their cells have a nucleus, but no cell walls or chloroplasts. Cell walls or chloroplasts are present in uh, plant cells. And uh, animals feed on organic substances made by other living organisms, and they're multicellular, meaning that they have more than one cell. They are uh, they have more cells, many cells. Plant kingdom. The characteristic features of all plants are that uh, cells are multicellular. Uh, their cells have a nucleus, and uh, cell walls made up of cell cellulose and often contain chloroplasts. So chloroplasts, uh, their function. Um, 
you you know the function right or do i need to explain that can i get some response please okay you want me to explain okay yeah so um chloroplasts more oftenly present in uh, plant kingdom uh, plant uh, in the plant cells right so chloroplasts contain chlorophyll which uh, take energy from the sunlight they absorb energy from light energy from uh, the sun and they convert it into um, yeah they they take the energy from the sunlight and uh, it's used in the photosynthesis process when they're making food yeah that's why chloroplasts are present chlorophyll is present in chloroplasts and uh, they they absorb uh, light energy yeah and they feed by photosynthesis plant uh, plants are fed, uh, fed by photosynthesis and they may have roots stems and leaves but some plants do not have these organs chloroplasts are uh, present in all plant cells uh, yes they are can you please tell what is photosynthesis oh they deleted the message root hair cells yeah a root hair cell i don't think uh, all plants have it some have it and some do not you can see it right they may have roots stems and leaves but some plants do not have these organs not all have root hair cells so should i go to the next slide or uh, what is the explanation clear or should i explain again Oh uh, yeah you're welcome Yeah so yeah now we have fungus kingdom the characteristic features of fungi are they are usually multicellular but some uh, such as yeast are unicellular so there's both unicellular and multicellular and they have nuclei and cell walls but the walls are not made up of cellulose and um, cellular cell walls are mainly present in plant cells and yeah fungus uh, fungi do not have chlorophyll they feed by digesting waste organic material and absorbing into their cells and also fungus are known to be decomposers they feed saprophytically and parasitically yeah and any doubts I see someone is typing. I'm going to wait for them. What are the cell wall of fungus made of? I don't think that's required because um, it's not in the textbook. Also, so and you, uh, it's not needed. You don't need to know it. Oh yes, I will share the uh, presentation in IG Biology uh, channel. You're welcome. You're welcome. yeah uh yeah but uh, i think uh, yeah it's not in the syllabus uh, the what uh, fungi cell walls are made up of it's not in the syllabus you don't need to know it you just have to know that plant cell walls are made up of cellulose and uh, fungus cell walls are not made up of cellulose now we have the protoctist kingdom the characteristic features of protoctist is that they are multicellular or unicellular and um, their cells have a nucleus and may or may not have a cell wall and chloroplast so cell wall uh, their cell walls have a nucleus and may or may not have a cell wall and chloroplast some feed by photosynthesis and others feed on organic substances made by other organisms yeah um so chloroplasts are present in protoctist yeah some protoctists have chloroplast present in them any doubts is there any feature that is unique to protoctists 
Hmm. Uh, example of this kingdom. Uh, I don't think examples are also required for uh, Protoctus. Seaweed, yeah, as you can see in the picture, seaweed, yes. And uh, yeah, should I go to the next slide? I'm going to go to the next slide because there's no response. Now we have the prokaryote kingdom. The characteristic features of prokaryotes, they're usually unicellular, meaning that only one single, they're single celled organisms. They don't have more than one cell. And uh, they have no nucleus. They have cell walls not made up of cellulose, again. Uh, they have no mitochondria. They have a circular loop of DNA, which is free in the cytoplasm, and they often have plasmids. Yeah, is that clear or do we have, have any doubt? Plasmids? Uh, one minute, I'll tell you what a plasmid is. Um, yeah, uh, we have the picture right here. I'll, I'll zoom in and show it to you. Wait just a minute. Here you can see this, right? Plasmid. This is the plasmid. It's circular DNA. Uh, should I go to the next slide? Yeah, it's for DNA modification. Yeah, for genetic modification, you use uh, plasmids. But what would be the... So it's like a chromosome, but circular? It's DNA, but circular. But what would be the difference between the loop of DNA and plasmid? I don't think that you're required to know that for now. In the syllabus, it's not uh, mentioned. So should I go to the next slide? I, I mean, these questions I'm not answering because I, I never got to know because that was not in the syllabus. So yeah. Do prokaryotes have nucleus? No, they have no nucleus. Prokaryotes do not have nucleus. But they do have DNA though. Circular loops of DNA and plasmids. Yeah, you're welcome. I'll go to the next slide. Groups within the animal and plant kingdom. Now in the kingdoms, we have groups as well. Now, yeah, vertebrates, uh, they are groups within the animal kingdom. Vertebrates and arthropods are uh, groups within the uh, animal kingdom. Yeah, vertebrates are animals that have backbones. These are the uh, most familiar animals, and the groups are fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. Arthropods. Arthropods are animals with jointed legs but no backbone. They have a waterproof exoskeleton. There are several different groups of arthropods, including insects, crustaceans, arachnids, and myriapods. Vertebrates. Yeah, we have fish first. Uh, the characteristic features of fish is that they are vertebrates, but with scaly skin. They have gills throughout their life. And it's a respiratory organ, by the way, gills. They have fins. Their eggs have no shells and are laid in water. Amphibians. The characteristic features of amphibians are they are vertebrates with skin, uh, with no scales, though. Their eggs have no shells and are laid in water. The tadpoles live in water, but adults often live on land. Tadpoles have give gills for gas exchange, but adults have lungs. Uh, as they grow, yeah. 
and also amphibians go through this uh, process of uh, uh, just remember what is what is it called yeah metamorphosis it's changing from a larva with one body form to an adult with a different body form so i guess that explains how they have gills uh, tadpoles have gills but the adults have lungs yeah so should i go to the next slide do we have any doubts or questions do do they breathe through the skin uh um they um i'm not so sure but i think earthworms do earthworms do earthworms do frogs uh, i'm not very sure do they keep their gills or does metamorphosis get rid of them as they grow uh i think they eventually grow into lungs do we have any more questions or uh, shall we move to the next topic okay sure now we have reptiles uh, the characteristic features of reptiles they are vertebrates with scaly skin and they lay eggs with uh, soft shells and they are mainly present on uh, they they are present on land and as well as the water and uh, birds the characteristic features of birds they have feathers and also sometimes a few scales they have a beak their front two limbs are wings though not all birds can fly sorry there's a typo here again yeah uh so yeah not all birds can fly they lay eggs with hard shells uh do we have any questions for this topic any doubts is laying egg a physical property of bird Can you please give an example of birds with scales? Um, I I I personally don't know any birds with scales, but you just need to know that there are a few birds with scales. That's what's mentioned in the textbook. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Now we have mammals. Uh, the characteristic features of mammals are they they have fur uh, fur slash hair on their skin. Their young develop in a uterus attached to the mother by a placenta. Uh, uh, the females have mammary glands which produce milk to feed their young. They have different kinds of teeth. I think uh, you can uh, check more about teeth in the seventh chapter. They have a pinna, ear flap, ear flap on the outside of the body. They have sweat glands, sweat glands in the skin, and they have a diaphragm. Do we have any uh, doubts? Do you do you want me to any? Do you want me to explain anything about this? Okay, so should I move to the next topic? Okay. Now we come to arthropods. Uh, these are part of the animal kingdom as well, a group within it. Um, and uh, yeah, we have insects. Uh, the characteristic features of insects is that they are arthropods with three pairs of jointed legs. They have two pairs of wings. They breathe through tubes called trachea, and their body is divided into three parts: head, thorax, and abdomen. And they have one pair of antenna. and you need to be able to remember all of these uh, that's what the syllabus says as well all these characteristic features they are commonly asked and then yeah we move on to crustaceans uh, the characteristic features of the crustaceans is that they are arthropods with more than four pairs of jointed legs and they have two pairs of antenna an example is a crab do and lobsters also do we have any questions Do all insects have wings? 
Yeah, they do. But I don't think ants can be classified as insects. Uh, are they myriapods or insects? Wait, let me just actually search that up. Yeah, I I just found out that they're insects. So yes, some may have, some may uh, not have wings. Do we have any more questions? Can you see my screen though? Okay, okay, then I'll uh, start presenting again.
Yeah, can everyone hear me now? Okay, yes, I'll start presenting now. Yeah. Can you see the presentation? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we were discussing about arthropods. Yeah. So uh, arachnids and the char characteristic features of them are they are arthropods with four pairs of jointed legs. The body is divided into two parts: is the phalothorax and abdomen, and they have no antennae. Uh, myriapods, the characteristic features are their body consists of many similar segments. Each of their body segment has jointed legs and they have one pair of antenna. Uh, I, yeah. And uh, do we have any doubts? No? Okay, then should I go ahead or should I explain more? Should I go ahead with the next topic or is there more explanation needed? Okay. Now we come to the plant kingdom groups. First we have ferns. Ferns are plants with leaves called fronds. Uh, the char characteristic features are they are plants with roots, stem and leaves, which is fronds, and uh, they do not uh, produce flowers. So it's a non-flowering uh, plant. And they reproduce by spores produced on the underside of their fronds. And flowering plants, the characteristics is that they are plants with roots, stems, and leaves. They reproduce using flowers and seeds, whereas ferns reproduce using uh, fronds. And flowering plants, their seeds are produced inside an ovary in the plants. Fronds, uh, yeah. Uh, you see the leaves, right? Um, the leaves are called the fronds. These leaves right here, right? They, they are called fronds. How exactly? So there's something called uh, spores, and these spores are produced on the underside of these fronds. And uh, yeah, rep uh, they reproduce using those uh, spores by them, actually. Something like fungi, uh, not really like fungi. Asexual, yes, because uh, no seeds are actually used. Can everyone hear me? Yeah, spore is, is a method in asexual reproduction. Yeah, so should I go ahead with the next topic?
Now we have flowering plants. Now flowering plants are actually of two types. They are dicotyledons and monocotyledons. Uh, dicotyledons are uh, usually, uh, uh, they have seeds with uh, two cotyledons and they usually have a main root with uh, side roots coming out from it. Their leaves have a network of veins. They have flower, plant, uh, flower parts, example petals in, uh, in uh, multiples of four or five. And they have vascular bundles in the stem arranged in a ring. Monocots, they have seeds with one cotyledon. Their uh, root grows out directly from the stem um, and their leaves have parallel veins. They have flower parts, which is petals in multiples of three. And they have vascular bundles in the stem arranged randomly. Uh, there's this diagram here, monocots and dicots. Uh, here you have a single cotyledon in monocot and two cotyledons in dicot. The, uh, the leaf is long and narrow and uh, parallel veins for monocot. Dicot, it's a broad leaf and there's a network of veins. Whereas for monocot, you have parallel veins. And uh, in monocots, the vascular bundles are scattered. Um, and in dicot, the vascular bundles are in a ring. And monocots, the flower parts are in multiples of three. Dicots, flower parts are in, uh, sorry, floral parts are in multiples of four or five. Do we have any questions, any doubts? No? Okay. So was the explanation clear? Okay. Yeah. Uh, and the last topic is viruses. Uh, you just need to know that they're not classified in any of the five kingdoms. And you need to know that they're not living. Uh, they're, they're not living things or living organisms. I'll just read it out. Viruses are not classified in any of the five kingdoms as they do not show the characteristics of living organisms. They do not have cells and consist of genetic material surrounded by a protein coat. And uh, they're not actually living things, but uh, they need a host to, uh, you know, to actually, uh, for them to reproduce, right? They need a host. They go into the, they go into the host body and then they become living. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much about it. That's the whole chapter. Do we have any more questions? Do I need to explain more topics with everything? COVID, um, you you don't uh, you have that in chapter ten, but not in uh, this chapter. Uh, for this chapter syllabus, I'll show it to you guys again. Uh, you just need to describe the characteristics of living organisms. Uh, these are all of the seven characteristics along with their definitions and the concept and uses of classification systems. COVID uh, isn't uh, mentioned in this chapter, but in chapter 10, which is, uh, wait, let me just open the textbook. Yeah, in chapter 10, diseases and immunity, you have a little bit, uh, you just have a small section of it. Yeah, diseases and immunity, chapter 10. You have, uh, you learning about COVID, just, um, you know, the safety precautions, etc. And uh, that's pretty much about it. It's not really uh, that much. You can go through the 10th chapter. Uh, if you have the um, fourth edition uh, IDCSE biology textbook, um, it's on page 207, 208. Yeah, generally for, yeah, general for mostly all virus. Yeah. Yeah, I think that uh, marks the end of this chapter. The virus have nucleus. No, we only have genetic material and it's surrounded by a protein coat. Yes, yes, genetic material. RNA, uh, you will have it in chapter 16.
so um any more doubts questions uh do you all want to solve any mcq questions i have a pdf ready as well for this chapter okay sure i will start sharing that Yeah, can you see my screen? I've I've shared this paper. Okay, so the question here is: the image below is uh, below shows a house mouse whose scientific name is Mus masculus. Which genus does it belong to? It's not a. Uh, you need to identify the genus. It's just how we discussed about the binomial naming system. genus and species yeah you're right you follow it see it's mus and uh, question 2 which of the following would not be a characteristic seen in living organisms i'll wait for the answer d you're right for the synthesis question 3 uh, which name can be given to a group of organisms that have similar morphological features and can reproduce successfully to produce fertile offspring d species yeah you're right it's species um question 4 a yeast glucose and water are mixed in a test tube the diagrams show the test tube at the start and after one hour which process causes this change b yeah it um yeah it is respiration so we'll go to the next question which class of vertebrate typically gives birth to live uh, to live young Yeah, this is A. It's mammals. These were only five questions. So should I? Uh, should you, do you guys want any more questions? Yeah, I I'm fine with question five. Okay, sure. I'll explain. Um, and there's not much to explain though. If um. <clears throat> Mammals uh, typically give birth to live young. Yeah, you're right, Savage Donut. B, C, and D all lay eggs, and uh, mammals. Uh, yeah, they have uh, the uterus pres present in them, and they have mammary glands also. So, Yeah, you're welcome. So, should I present more questions? No. Okay. Yeah. No more questions. Okay. You guys don't. Oh, someone says yes. If you do, do you want me to present uh, MCQs or the theory questions? Is it possible to do a question involving the dichotomous key? Okay, sure. We'll do dichotomous key questions. Yeah.
Just give me a minute. I'm going to open the PDF. Yeah, can everyone see my screen? These are all theory questions for this chapter. All living organisms uh, show the same seven characteristics. They are listed below along with their definitions. Match the characteristics and definitions by drawing lines between them on the diagram below. Yeah. So sh will you guys give me the answers or should I go or should I um, solve it? Yes, nutrients is taking in of materials. Yes, I, 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 yeah, I'll wait for you, Bill Moon. Yeah, you're right. Excretion is the removal. Yeah, you're right. Reproduction is making more. It's a process that makes more of the same kind of organism. Yeah, growth is a permanent increase in size. Sensitivity, yeah, you're right. Ability to detect and respond to the changes. And uh, respiration is the chemical reactions in the cells that break down nutrient molecules and release energy. Yeah, that's this. I think that's the end of this question. Should I move to the next question? Okay. Viruses are not classified as living organisms. Suggest two characteristics of living organisms that viruses do not carry out. Respiration, excretion, yes, you're right. But it does carry out reproduction. So you can, uh, I think all the other six uh, characteristics are applicable except for uh, uh, reproduction. So I'll write the answer, respiration and excretion. Yeah, the next question. A student was investigating uh, the growth of plants and their sensitivity to changes in light intensity. Table, table 1 shows their results. Calculate the mean growth of the plant at a light intensity of 20 arbitrary units. Yeah, you just need to add all of them and find the average. Yeah, it is 4.6. Yeah, next question. So your uh, one is a photograph of a lion. Lions are mammals and have the scientific name Panthera leo. 
वन टीचर या पर बॉडी है दैट्स राइट एंड स्टेट द जीनस ऑफ दिस मैमल पैंथरा यस बिकॉज इन बायोनोमियल दे जीनस एंड स्पीशीज सो इट्स पैंथरा so let's go ahead with the next question mammals are one of the five groups of vertebrates can i say penny for the future yeah you can is laying egg a visible feature yeah, i i'm not very sure about that sorry yeah mammals are one of the five groups of vertebrates some features of the three vertebrate uh, groups are listed identify the uh, vertebrate groups lay soft shell eggs yeah it's reptiles feathers it's do you, yeah it's birds smooth and moist skin it's amphibian yeah next question uh, figure 2 is a diagram of an animal cell identify the parts labeled a b and c a is cytoplasm yes b is cell membrane yes and c is nucleus yeah you're right state the name of two structures in plant cells that are absent in animal cells cell wall yes yeah cell wall and protoplast yeah state the name of one structure that is present in bacterial cells and in plant cells but absent in uh, animal cells it's a uh, uh, cell wall not made up of cellulose but uh, cell uh, i think the plant cell wall is made up of cellulose you're wrong we don't uh, really have capsules in our syllabus let me just check in the textbook we often have plasmids but plasmids plants uh, pla plants uh, do not have right plasmids are not present in uh, plant yeah it is cell walls not specifically cellulose but we can write cell wall not specifically cellulose because that becomes wrong as well if we write cellulose cell wall we can just write cell wall i guess chloroplast uh, Um, no because it's not present in bacterial cells it's only cell wall so should i go to the next question okay some cells are specialized to perform a particular function the boxes on the left show the name of some specialized cells uh draw four lines to link each specialized cell with its function ciliated uh, cell yes it's the movement of mucus neuron it's the conduction of impulses rbc yes blood transport sorry transport of oxygen the yeah, palisade mesophyll cell for photosynthesis uh 
Okay, so should I move to the next question? Okay, scientists classify organisms into groups. State one feature that is used to identify vertebrates. Yeah, they all have a backbone. You can write that. Backbone is preferred. I, you could write backbone. Vertebrates, um, um, well, uh, backbone is much preferred, um, you know. Segmented body, even uh, some of the, uh, what do you call it? Um, <clears throat> arthropods have it too, some uh, segmented body. Some of the arthropods have it too. They won't ask for two features. Commonly, it's just only one. So you could write backbone. They all have a backbone. Yeah. So should we move on to the next question or uh, any doubts? 3B, the vertebrates are classified into five groups. Figure uh, one shows three vertebrates found in Australia, the emu, saltwater crocodile, and dark-billed platypus. Each belong to a different vertebrate group. All three animals lay eggs that develop and hatch on land. State the name of the vertebrate uh, group uh, to which Ingus belongs and give one feature of this group. No, no, no. It cannot be a mammal uh, because it's laying an egg. Mammals give birth and it has a feather. So it's a bird. Cannot be mammal because as you can see, it's laying an egg. Yeah. La, uh, state the name of the vertebrate group to which crocodiles belong and give one feature. Reptile. And feature is that uh, they have scaly skin. Yeah. Scaly skin and also that it lays uh, soft shelled eggs. Uh, the duck bill platypus is classified as a mammal or give evidence for and against classifying the duck bill platypus as a mammal. So against you could say that, uh, yeah, for you could say that uh, it has uh, and the picture, how can you tell if the animal lays soft? soft? Yeah, yeah, for it has fur and against it lay eggs. Yeah, you're right. So um, I'm moving on to the next question. This platypus have has have mammary glands. I don't think so because in the picture it was laying eggs. I'm moving on to the next question. There are two groups of vertebrates which lay eggs that develop in water. State the name of these two groups of vertebrates. Yeah, fish. Yeah, and amphibians, you're right. It's fish and amphibians. Yeah, complete the sentences about the kingdoms. Vertebrates belong to the kingdom uh, belong the uh, kingdom, the animal kingdom. Animal, yeah, yeah, animal kingdom, they all have a uh, backbone. There are, f uh, there are five classes.
you have five classes of vertebrates and the other four uh, kingdoms which include uh, plants prokaryote protoctist and um, prokaryote and bacteria are the same um fungi it is a kingdom fungi is a kingdom yeah should we move on to the next question uh show six different arthropods uh, labeled a b c d and f Uh, state one feature that can be used to classify an animal as an arthropod. No backbone. Yeah, jointed legs. Yes, they all have several pairs of jointed legs, and they have an exoskeleton. You could say exoskeleton and jointed legs. How about no backbones? Uh, yeah, but I don't think that would be in the mark scheme, though. Exoskeleton would be better because uh, they they they'd want you to be specific, and even this uh, textbook you have exoskeleton and several pairs of jointed legs. segmented body i don't think so they're talking about all arthropods right so yeah so i'm moving on to the next question state one visible features that uh, a b c and have that d and uh, d e and f do not have wings yes they all have wings the letters state one visible feature that are uh, arthropods a b and c have that arthropods d e and f do not have Yeah, it it is wings. Uh, state uh, state the letter of organism in figure one. That is a crustacean. You need to find the crustacean here. Um. Yeah, you're right. E is a crustacean. Yeah, it's a crab. Next question. Um. Yeah, and also you need to state the reason for your answer. Yeah, you could say two antennae, and uh, you could say that they have more than four pairs of jointed legs. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Arvin and Savage Donut. It's okay, it's okay, and I don't think you could actually write claws. so i should i move to the next question okay one of the drawings uh, shows an arthropod named arenas uh, didymetus i'm sorry if the pronunciation was wrong uh, this arthropod has a body in two segments and it has eight legs uh, state the letter of the organism in figure 1 that shows uh, this particular arthropod it has body in two segments and eight legs yeah it is f it's f yeah right it's f state the name of the group of arthropods that includes this uh, f 
arachnid yeah it's arachnid yeah next question the phylum arthropods can be grouped into different classes state how many classes are found within the phylum arthropod waiting for the answer ah uh, yeah so um phylum is basically those particular groups within each animal kingdom so uh, sorry within the kingdoms so we have um arthropod which is part of the animal kingdom and uh, you have insects which is one crustaceans number two arachnids myriapod so we have four four you can find four So is this question clear? Should we move on? Yeah. Yeah. Here we have a dichotomous key question. Uh, figure one is a branching key used to identify different species of bacteria. Figure two shows the uh, six different species of bacteria. Use the key to identify the six different species. Does the bacteria have flagella? Yes. Do the bacteria have more than one flagellum? Oh yeah, by Arvin. So, uh, can anyone solve this question or? Uh, Top left is F. Okay, okay. I'll 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 hold it like this. The top right. Uh, you mean the third one? Okay. A is the middle one. Let's see. The, does the bacteria have flagella? Yes. Does the bacteria have more than one flagellum? Yes. I'm not very sure about this question. This is a bit confusing. F A C D B. Okay, so you think the first one is F. Let's check. Does the bacteria have flagella? No. Does the bacteria have a spiral shape? No. Does the bacteria form a chain? No. So yeah, it is F. So the first one is F. The second one, um, do the bacteria have flagella? Yes, they do. Do they have more than one flagellum? Yes. Isn't it uh, C, the second one? How does the first one not have a spiral shape? But doesn't that only have one flagellum? Which one? Top, middle. Even I am confused with these questions. Should I open the marking scheme? Okay. 
Okay, just a minute. I'll have to stop sharing my screen then. Uh, just a minute. I'll just find it. Yeah. Can you all see the, uh, my screen? Can you all see the marking scheme? Five A top row in order from left to right. F A E. So this one is F. This one is A. This one is E, C, B, D. Bottom isn't a flagellum and the which one? Which one on the bottom? Yeah, okay. So should we go ahead with the next question? Say the name of the kingdom that bacteria belongs to. It's prokaryote. We have another one. Uh, state one similarity between the structure of bacteria and structure of viruses. Uh, yeah, you could say that strand of DNA. Let me check the. Um, yeah, both contain genetic material or DNA or RNA, both contain protein. Yeah, DNA would be now. Should I go ahead with the next question? Okay. Figure 3 is a photomicrograph of Vibrio cholerae, the bacterium that causes cholera. Write the formula that would be used to calculate the actual length of bacterium. This is, I think this is for chapter 2. The magnification is given and... Uh, Image by magnification. Let's check. Actual length of bacterium is equal to image size uh, or length divided by magnification. Yeah, you're right. It's image size by magnification. And the actual length 0 0.0026 millimeters converted to micrometers is 2.6 micrometers. Should I go ahead with the next question? Yeah, this is the last question. Um, figure 4 shows a bacterial cell. Identify the structures labeled A to F.
Yeah, A is a cell wall. B, um, uh, yeah, it is ribosomes. And C, E is plasmid, let me check. Yeah, E is the plasmid, yeah. Yeah, F is strand of DNA. It's not a vacuole. D, uh, yeah, it is cytoplasm. You're right. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, I think uh, uh, those are the questions in this PDF. 